Minecraft is an amazing game, but its music is what ties it together. From turning a boring farming session into a relaxing pastime, to the eerie yet breathtaking feeling you get when stepping into the nether, the soundtrack really sets the game apart from the many, 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 many voxel games that have come before and since. But today, we aren't talking about just background music. We're talking about the famous music discs, rare collectible items scattered throughout your Minecraft world with special tracks you won't hear anywhere else in the game. Most are just what you would expect, and there's some great tracks among them, but two of them stand apart from the rest. Disc 13 the first disc to ever be added into the game, long ago, back in July of 2010. But 13 is not a conventional piece of music like most of its counterparts, or even just the cat disc that was added in the same update. No, disc 13 is a bit of an anomaly. Among the calming synths of Cat, the cheery chimes of Maul, and the, let's say, unique recorder of Stal, Disc 13 hits you with ominous ambience that sounds straight out of a horror film project before an onslaught of eerie game sounds that paint a story familiar to us all. Let's take a listen. This is the opening of Disc 13. Cave ambience, dripping water, and tolling bells immediately attract your attention, drawing you away from the nostalgic, upbeat tone present throughout the rest of the Minecraft soundtrack. But after just over a minute, the almost relaxing ambience is interrupted. Two arrows fired from a great distance. One is silent upon impact. The other reaches its target who lets out a groan before the ambience continues. At 1.30, the disc goes silent. That's no coincidence or random design choice. It's a reference to the name of the track. Seven seconds later, the ambience resumes. We hear the low hiss of a creeper, then... A distant explosion reverberating throughout the cave. Someone or something falls into a pool of water, and seconds later, they pull themselves out, the water trickling off of them onto the rocky floor of the cavern. They begin to run, then stop. They continue, then stop again. As the bassy ambience of the cave begins to return, the running starts once more, and this time they don't rest. The running begins to speed up. Seconds later, the cave sounds intensify with a hint of static, filling the listener with a sense of dread for the safety of our protagonist. Until, suddenly, disc 13 cuts off, leaving us sitting in silence for the last seconds of the track. So, what is disc 13 trying to tell us? Well, we have everything we need. Now all that's left is to piece it together, fill in the gaps, and form its story. Let's start from the top. The disc opens with ambience, cave sounds, and dripping water, which establishes our setting. A cave, of course, with a source of water somewhere within. Possibly multiple, considering how often we hear the water dripping. But, other than that, the ambience is undisturbed. No player sounds, no mob sounds, nothing. Complete peace. That is, until a minute and five seconds, when two bow shots break the relative silence. We don't know who shot the arrows, but considering the mob sounds we hear later on in the track, I would imagine this is a skeleton. One of the shots hits its target, which, judging by the groan we hear, must be a player. The second arrow, on the other hand, falls dead. We don't hear it hit the ground, we don't hear it hit the player, and it doesn't sound like it lands in the water. It simply disappears. This, I can't really explain. Maybe the arrow was shot far enough away that we just can't hear it, like if it missed the player and went down into a ravine. Maybe the arrow was shot into a nether portal and came out in another dimension, which is why it fell silent. Or maybe, and this is the most likely explanation, C418 just forgot to add the second arrow sound. 
The simplest explanation is usually the right one. After the bow shots, everything falls silent once again. No running, no fighting. The skeleton just stops shooting and the player sounds frozen in place. This, again, I cannot explain. It may lend some credence to the portal theory. If the player went through a portal to escape the skeleton, then everything here would be accounted for. One shot hits you, the other misses and goes through the portal, and when you follow it through, the cave returns to peace because there's nothing to be attacked. Again, this may be a stretch, but it's the only thing I can think of that would make sense. But once the relative silence returns, it stays, serene and somewhat eerie until the sudden cutoff at 1.30. Again, that's no coincidence. Disc 13 cuts to silence at 13.0. When the sound returns, the ambience does the same, but it's only a matter of seconds before a familiar hiss nearby precedes a distant explosion, reverberating throughout the cave to our ears. Of course, this can be attributed to a creeper, but some things seem a bit off. The explosion sound itself doesn't sound like that of a creeper or TNT, and while the explosion is clearly very far away, the hiss sounds nearby. I would guess this is just a stylistic choice from C418 since I genuinely can't see any other logical explanation for the discrepancy in sound. As the explosion fades away, we hear the iconic splash of Minecraft. Someone has either been blown into a pool or jumped in voluntarily trying to take cover. I'm sure we've all made the mistake of thinking that water stops creeper damage when it only prevents damage to the terrain around it. This could very easily be a reference to that. Shortly afterwards, our protagonist heaves themselves out of the water, still trickling off of them onto the stone, and they begin to run with a few short stops. The pauses could mean anything. Maybe they had to eat, maybe they were moving something in their inventory, maybe they saw something and froze. We truly have no way of knowing. But the third time they take off, they don't stop. As the sounds of the cave get louder, the running speeds up, until suddenly, the record cuts to silence, leaving us with an ominous cliffhanger. Disc 13 is one of the creepiest parts of Minecraft history, spawning theories and poorly written creepypastas for over a decade now. But what does it all mean? Well, to take an educated guess, nothing. There may seem to be some loosely connected story of a miner struggling to escape from the creatures surrounding him, but there's too much inconsistency and in parts that can't be explained to really say there's a cohesive, solid tale to be told. For all we know, the two parts of Disc 13 may not even be linked. Disc 13 was almost certainly made simply to reflect the eeriness of cave mining, even back in the day, and the superstition and implied lore of it has written the track into Minecraft legend. Disc 11, however, is a different story. No lore or scary story is needed to tell that Disc 11 is different. Its sprite is slightly unsettling already, an all-black disc shattered into pieces with a cryptic name. But if you do go looking for the more hidden meanings to the track, your curiosity won't go unanswered. Let's start with the, uh, song itself. The track opens with static, before cutting to the sound of a player running in a rocky cave, breathing hard. Suddenly, our protagonist comes to a stop, and we hear the sound of something shuffling as the cave sounds get louder and distant noises echo towards us. An object begins to click, before silence sets in. Then... Coughing. Another click, and a short breath. We hear the sound of either walking or blocks being placed, but we're interrupted. More shuffling and breathing. Then we hear a pop, followed by flipping through what sounds to be a book of sorts, until we're startled. And as the sounds continue to get louder, we frantically click and flip through the pages before we start to run. Deep breath. Faster. Now on the dirt. It's approaching. Static. If disc 13 was unsettling, disc 11 is frightening. The snarls of monsters keep us on edge before some mysterious, unidentifiable source of evil chases us to our presumed death. But with all the atmosphere and creepiness of disc 11, what is its story? Well, I think it may actually be easier to find than you may think. 
The disc starts with static, which isn't too unusual. That happens in the real world with vinyl records and other discs of all kinds, and it's just off-putting enough to open for disc 11. But when the track truly begins, we cut to the familiar sounds of a player running on the stony floor of a cave, accompanied by heavy breathing. As the running stops and the ambience of the cave grows louder, we hear the sound of something shuffling before a repeated clicking, silence, and a cough, the sounds of a flint and steel. With a source of light, he begins to progress through the cave, but a snarl of what sounds like an enderman stops him. We hear him take a book out of his bag, pop the clasp open, and begin to flip through the pages. This could be anything. A collection of maps, a journal, a mining log, maybe all three and more. But the odd screech of what sounds like a ghast then sounds in the distance, and Steve pauses, as would I if I heard one while mining in the overworld. And yet, it's not over. Someone or something dashes past him, and he whips around trying to find his assailant. He strikes the flint and steel together for light, but the ghast-like noises get louder and sound almost like a broken record while an eerie flush of air resonates back and forth. He clicks the flint and steel once more, but whatever he sees is met with a sharp inhale and fright, and he begins to run, breathing hard. The beast is on his tail. It sounds as if the very air around him begins to warp and distort as a wicked growl fills our ears. Then. The track is over at 1 minute and 11 seconds, the cursed number itself. Disc 11 has been subject to a number of theories, but most can be safely debunked. The first, which is obviously going to come up anytime anything remotely spooky happens in Minecraft, is Oh my god, it's your mind! And while that's a theory conceived by 10 year olds that spend too much time reading Minecraft creepypasta, it's can't be entirely ruled out just because of that. In fact, if you look at a spectrogram of Disc 11, you can actually see what appears to be a Steve or a Herobrine face, along with the signature of the disc's author, C418, with the 12 here standing for C in hex code. But Herobrine's presence here is provably false, we'll get back to that in a moment. Because while Herobrine might be an obvious pick for anything spooky, there's another theory, a leading theory, one promoted by big YouTubers like Wi-Fi's, that may sound a bit more reasonable. The Enderman. After all, Disc 11 was added in Beta 1.9, just one update after the Enderman was added, and it could have easily been a reference to the new mob. But see, the 11 music disc wasn't the first time we heard this track. In fact, Disc 13 wasn't the first time we heard its track either. 13 started off as Ambience, and 11's origins are as an unused music file all the way back in Alpha 1.0.16. That was over a year before the Enderman was added to the game, and the original Herobrine story wouldn't be conceived until 1.0.16 Build 2 came out a day later. Even the gas noises we heard are out of place, not just because they're taking place presumably in the overworld, but because the gas wasn't added to the game until Minecraft Alpha 1.2, two months later. So, Eleven is simply too old for either of these to make any sense, and other theories like being chased by the Wither or a Warden, while fun and maybe believable if the track were newer, are simply so much more recent that it's not reasonable to give them any credence. Taking a look at the mobs that did exist at the time though, doesn't help us much. Nothing on this list has the sort of presence that we heard in the track. Half of these mobs are passive, and the ones that aren't are nothing more than a mild nuisance with the exception of the creeper, which sounds nothing like any of the noises in Disc 11. There is one candidate here that looks tempting though, the giant. For those that don't know the ancient history of Minecraft, giants textured like zombies once used to exist, and technically still do in a fully disabled state. But the giant never spawned naturally, and giant spawn eggs have never been part of Minecraft without mods. And while it's not unreasonable to think that maybe giants were planned to have a larger part in the game at one point, and this track banked off of that happening, well, it might sound silly, but giants can't fit in a cave. Plus, giants made the same sounds as zombies at the time, which we never hear throughout the track. The only other major theory left is that discs 13 and 11 are somehow meant to be combined, where one will fill in the silence of the other, but that's really just not the case. You have to do some weird stretching and speeding up just to get them properly aligned, and even then, the audio isn't linked enough to be considered significant. 
but that cuts out each and every lead we had, and leaves us with something inexplicable. A seemingly time-traveling disc, with sounds of the Endermen and Ghast long before they were ever even thought of, and a mysterious, ungodly beast chasing you to your supposed death. So what is Disc 11? With each and every lead now gone, it leaves me with very few options, but I think there is an explanation. The Ghast and Endermen might not have made an appearance in Disc 11, but it may be the other way around. See, both Disc 11 and 13 were authored by Daniel Rosenfeld, much better known as C418. C418 was around from the very, very early days of the game, and was responsible for much of the early music. But what seems to evade the mind of Disc 11 theorists is that C418 also was responsible for parts of Minecraft's sound design in the early days, including that of the Ghast and very possibly the Enderman. So, Disc 11 may not have been an accurate depiction of Minecraft in the early days, but it would serve as the inspiration for the sounds of the Minecraft Ghast and Enderman in the months to follow. Except that still leaves us with one loose end, the Boogeyman of Disc 11. Who or what is it that chases us to our doom as the track closes? We've gone through every mob in the game at the time without success, and there aren't any modern mobs with the same sounds as the disc that would suggest it was ever used for inspiration, which leaves me with just one theory. Assuming there is any meaning to the growls at the end of Disc 11, it may have been a monster that never made it out of development. There's been 10, 20, 30 mobs that have either been removed or cancelled, and this could very easily be one of the earliest examples of it. Perhaps this was an early prototype of the Ender Dragon or the Wither before they ever made it into the game, or maybe this is one of the last remnants of a Minecraft overworld boss that we never saw. The full truth may never see the light of day. It's been over a decade without confirmation from Notch or C418 on just what these discs contain other than compressed uneasiness and fright. But with 13 telling a familiar tale of a miner's attempted escape from the monsters below, and Disc 11 presenting a troubling story filled with anachronous sound effects from the future of the game, and an unknown force of evil chasing us to the very end, it seems like the mystery, for now, has come to a close. Thank you all for watching the video, I very much hope you enjoyed. Uh, I tried to put a bit of an eerie feel into it with the atmosphere and the storytelling, so I also hope that came off well, but this is my first time doing it in quite a while so I'm probably a bit rusty. Sorry also that this video ended up taking a bit longer than it should have, that's partially because I'm sick, I don't know if you can tell, and partially because I'm starting to realize that the videos I take my time on tend to turn out better and even do better here on YouTube, so I think I'm gonna stick to that for a while. Don't expect videos to take like months at a time or anything, but weekly might be a bit less common from here on. Anyways though, that's about it. Thanks again for watching. I have a Discord in the description if you're interested in joining. Uh, like, dislike, subscribe, comment, share, whatever you want, and that's all for now. Have a good one guys. Peace.